Hello folks, welcome to another video here. Uh, I had a question from uh, one of the uh, viewers and this is about how does a designer fit in an agile structure or a scrum team? And to explain that, I'd like to get into my iPad as usual and wanted to explain it in a visual way that hopefully it makes sense for most of you, even if you don't exactly know what agile or scrum is. Uh, so we'll get into it. So if we look at Agile or Scrum uh, and how a designer fits in. Agile or Scrum is typically designed for development teams or uh, technical teams. So basically when your product's designed and it's ready for uh, you know development and execution work for it to be uh, deployed and launch, that's when you get into an Agile mode. So Agile predominantly is designed for technical teams rather than design teams. As designers, we usually think um, in, a, in a more ambiguous way and there's a lot more um, I, I guess uh, gray area in the way that we do things because we test and trial things and then see if it works with the emotions or not and stuff like that. And that's why design thinking process works really well for designers because it allows you to explore those type of ideas uh, and sometimes without certainties. And because you wanted to test things and see how things go, uh, then developers would come in and check whether it's feasible or not from a technical standpoint. So I'll just start by explaining what generally designers roles are uh, these days. And if we talk about in the product design con context, so you could see um, designers work in a process where you try to understand a problem. So there's understand, I'll start with understand as one point. Um, and then you define. This is what happens as well in uh, design sprints. If you've seen, you've seen some of our previous videos about design sprint, this is initially what happens in a design sprint. So you understand, you define, you ideate or you sketch your ideas, um, and then you decide you decide on a winning idea or you narrow down on your broader idea to get into a much more specific focus. Um, and you prototype you prototype your design, prototype. Then another important step is that you validate your design. See, if you think about this, this is pretty much design thinking process. Not just for designers, but for the purposes of this discussion, this is a, a an ideal process that designers would go through, uh, specifically in product design. But I would argue it's not just for product design, it's for everything, any type of design work that you do. You would understand, you would define a problem, you would ideate, come up with solutions. Uh, then you would decide on which one is the right solution. If you had three options, then what's the winning solution? You would prototype and you would validate your idea, whether it's with users or um, you know your stakeholders or whoever. Um, so once you've gone through that, ideally you have a prototype that's been validated and there's a level of certainty coming from that broad, very raw type of idea into a more narrowed down focus uh, as well as um, just a clearer understanding and a lot, a lot more alignment as well between people who are involved. It would be even greater if this process right here uh, is um, and you have a developer or an engineer as part of your team to just validate as you go through, uh, do a little bit of a sense check. So the design that you come up with is practical and it's uh, development friendly, right? So when you've gone through this process, this is where you get to a point where you've got a prototype and it's ready to be executed or it's ready to be developed. And that's when you get into an agile uh, process. So I'll just use a different color here, just so you understand. So I'll just represent Agile with this blue line over here. It looks a little bit like a loop and I'll stop there. In an Agile process, typically you have uh, Agile sprint planning. So we'll go Agile planning or sprint planning. So, and then you start the process. So planning means, you know, the, the development team gathers around and then maps out, you know, what are we focusing on in this agile sprint? Uh, and they decide on, you know, like this is how we're gonna do it. And they all take uh, parts from the, uh, within the development team. During, a, uh, during an agile sprint, there is this process that we would know of. It's called um, the daily standup. So the daily standup 
is when Agile team members uh, gather around typically in the in early in the morning when they start their day they'll stand up and gather around and spend about 15 minutes just to go through things that has worked things that has not worked how are we going to address your problems and stuff like that and they just go around the um around the table uh, and that's what you call a daily stand up happens every single day throughout the sprint whether it's a one week or a two week sprint uh, typically agile sprints are two weeks so there's a daily stand up and then at some point um, there will be a demo and there will be a go or no go decision so demo is when they feature the the uh, the product feature that sorry not feature but they showcase the product feature and demo it to the stakeholders or the project sponsor or whoever it is they demo the feature and say this is what we've worked on and we think it's ready what do you think and that's a almost like a review process uh, and then there's a go or no go decision uh, from the stakeholder or the product owner or whoever it is. If it's a go, that means this feature is gonna be launched and deployed. If it's no go, that means we're not gonna deploy this. Let's go, uh, let's start again and do this in the next sprint or restart this in the next sprint. Uh, but if it's a go, then it gets deployed, right? Uh, at the end of an agile process, usually, there is a thing called the retrospective. Retrospective is when agile team members gather around look back and see how can they do better in the next sprint. Essentially, it's a little bit of a reflection period for Agile sprint uh, teams. So that's what Agile or Scrum look like at a very, very top level, right? Um, now, the question is, where does a designer fit into an Agile or a Scrum environment like this? Uh, let me just change my marker here. Um, so designers, uh, after you know, understanding, defining, ideating or coming up with solutions, validating their prototypes and stuff like that, where like designers are predominantly involved. In Agile sprints, usually designers are not so involved anymore that they come in really just to clarify things if there are questions from the development team or they require support if the development team requires support. So for example, uh, there are certain elements from a design interface or there are certain pages that are missing or there are certain things that, you know, for some reason was just missed during the design process uh, and only discovered during the development process in the Agile Sprint. That's when a developer, a tech lead or a product owner would come up to the designer and say, hey, uh, Alvin, we need this interface, this pop up or it's missing this element or it's not quite in the design system. So you're doing more of a clarification on and support process. So what designers do here is they clarify and support. Should designers be part of your, you know, daily stand up, your planning, uh, the demo retrospective and all of that? My answer would be yes, it would be ideal, uh, obviously depending on how much time the designer has or whether or not it's an in-house design team or, you know, it's from an agency or an external design team, I'm not sure. But ideally, yes, you want to involve the designer in the process, at least uh, have them part of the loop. Uh, and then the designers can empathize with what the developers are going through as well. And that's how you create a better relationship within that environment or that production environment. Uh, so what happens after a retrospective typically is, you know, another sprint. It's either another sprint or another design process. So this could either go, you know, like another sprint like that, or uh, it could be another design process where designers would come in and add more um, interfaces or more experiences and stuff like that. So you go understand, define, idea you get the idea uh, and then it can go into another agile sprint so that's basically it so designers come in to clarify and support during an agile or a scrum uh, or a scrum process um, and then from there you get designers to work as part of the team within the agile uh, within the agile sprinting 
All right, so hopefully that makes sense, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. Uh, please do like and share it as well with your friends. Uh, I have got comments here where you've shared it with um, some of your students, if you're a lecturer, uh, and some of you who's shared it to your colleagues as well, and even decided to use the process that we've uh, talked about here in Real Lab Academy in your project. So I really, really love that type of comment. Uh, makes me feel like I've done something right here. Okay, guys, uh, have a good one and stay safe.